Hi guys, it's Diane from Skill Snacks. So I've had a few phone calls and emails as well as text messages um, with people asking me to go over the some pros and cons when it comes to travel nursing versus, let me correct, travel nursing slash agency nurses versus staff. Um, and I say slash because agency nursing and travel nursing is pretty much the same thing, except for the factor of meal and housing stipend pretty much. And if you're local versus if you're traveling outside of state. Um, so let me give you a quick example off the bat. Let's say, for example, you were doing what we consider agency nursing. Agency nursing is pretty much usually considered local and you get let's say a job that's under 50 miles from where you live and you get a higher rate from the hospital um, because they're not paying you sick time and vacation time and personal time and health benefits and all those things. You kind of have given up all those rights just to get a higher hourly rate. Um, whereas travel nursing is anything outside of 50 miles. So you can have local travel and you can have travel in another state like for example let's say you live in the state of texas and you have a hospital that you're going to be doing a contract at let's say a 13-week contract which is pretty much usually the minimum is just about three months or 13 weeks um and it can go higher than that of course but let's just say it's a 13-week contract and it's 51 miles away from where you actually live in the state of texas since it's 51 miles you know 50 miles plus away from your home you'll now be entitled to a housing stipend and a meal stipend, you know, at minimal. Sometimes the agencies will also give you money towards traveling, uh, a stipend uh, or reimbursement, I should say, going to that place and back to that place. Like that first amount of money you took to drive that far and then the amount of money you took to drive back home at the beginning and the end of a contract. Maybe not daily, but the beginning and the end. So, for example, let's say the housing and, uh, um, and meal stipend came to like five grand. Um, if it's 5,000, that legally is not a tax deductible item. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not a um, taxable item. So therefore, let's say you're, let's say you made 20 grand and you made 5,000 from just the stipend alone you're only going to be looked at from the government as making 20 grand, not the 25 grand that you actually made because the five grand is tax deductible in the government's eyes because it was a meal and housing stipend. And you can follow up with this information on um, gsa.gov, which is a government site explaining kind of how much they're allotting the agency to award you, so to speak, in terms of meals and housing stipend based on the state that you're working in and even the city that you're working in, down to even the zip code. So if you check out gsa.gov, you will get that information um, specifically to, to explain kind of what I'm saying. Um, so that's one really a huge benefit and perk of the travel nursing even if it's local versus going to another state. If you're over 50 miles plus, you're looking at a, you know, a nice little meal stipend and housing stipend that comes in handy if you live locally because you can use that towards your own rent or mortgage, your own grocery bill, etc. And unfortunately, if you're not, you know, close to home and you have to stay in a hotel, which I've had to do at times, it's going towards your hotel bill the the meals that you're eating while you're you know not at home etc and sometimes it really doesn't cover the whole um amount and sometimes you still have to come out of pocket so it all depends on the contract how much you're getting paid per hour how much you're getting paid towards the stipend etc um and that varies with every single agency and that varies with every kind of contract it all depends on what the nurse and the agency um, negotiates and what the hospital that the agency is working with is going to allow and what they're going to accept because all three of you guys have to be in agreement the hospital the agency and the nurse for for things to actually pan out the way you're hoping that it pans out 
Um, so I know I kind of jumped around a little bit. So let's just start with the pros in general. In general, which applies to both agency. When I say agency, not travel nursing, I mean a place that you're working that's under 50 miles from your home. Um, and I say under 50 miles because you're not going to be subjected to getting that extra money from meals and housing stipend. You're, it's just like working any other job. The only difference is you're getting paid a higher hourly rate because you're giving up sick time. You're giving up that sick pay money, that vacation pay money, that personal time money. You're giving up um, health benefits. You're giving up you know, bereavement benefits. I mean, in nursing, you have a lot of benefits. I'm, I don't know if it's the same at other jobs, but with our field, you know, you got your bereavement, you got your sick time, you got your vacation time, you got your personal time, et cetera. Um, so you're giving all that up um, just to get a higher uh, hourly uh, rate for that little 13 weeks that you're doing because you're trying to either earn money, save money, whatever the issue is, or you just don't want to be tied down to any one particular place. Whatever your issue may be in that situation, it varies with every single nurse because every single nurse has a different life, a different lifestyle, and different reasons for why they do what they do. Um, so, again, with agency, the difference is you're not getting that meal and housing stipend. Why is the meal and housing stipend so exciting? Because it's completely tax-free money. And it's beautiful to have tax-free money, especially if it's five grand or 10 grand or 20 grand or whatever, and that's like someone literally giving you cash in your hand and you don't have to pay anything um, from that to the government, and it's completely 100% legal. It's beautiful, um, you know. But it, So in terms of um, agency and travel nursing, uh, the pros is again, you have the higher hourly rate. You don't have to deal really with a lot of politics, and if you're staff, you're dealing with, you know, this meeting said this, and we have to do this, and oh my God, this, and she said this, and he said that, and all that nonsense. You don't have to really deal with a lot of politics on the unit and the floor. You can just go in there, focus on your patients, doing your job, doing your job excellent and well, because you're not only representing yourself with your license, you're also representing the agency that sent you. So what you do reflects your agency too. And let the hospital know, do we even want to deal with this agency again? Oh my God, they sent her this nurse, oh my God. Do we even want her back? Or, oh, they, they said this is nurse. She's so awesome. She's so great. She comes in. She doesn't, she doesn't um, complain about any assignments. She does her work. She, she does a great job. The patients love her. We love her. And she goes home. You know, she focuses on what she has to do when she leaves. She does the job that we pay her to do. You know, no ways. So that benefits you and the agency because... They want you to extend your contract if they should need a uh, nurse for more time. And it makes the agency happy because it makes them look good. And they can send even more nurses that hospital's way because it looks like they're a great agency that has hired awesome uh, nurses uh, to divvy out to different hospitals. So that's one of the huge pros is that you go in there, you butt your butt, and you show them what your worth is. And it makes them want you to stay longer and extend your contract and also make your agency happy as well. So again, uh, higher hourly rates is a huge thing. Not dealing with uh, the politics on the floor is beautiful. Focusing on just your patients and not any, really anything else. And when I say not anything else, when you're staff, you have to sometimes be subjected to training other staff members and newcomers or nurses that are... Um, uh, transitioning from one unit to another unit, things of that nature. When you're the agency nurse or the travel nurse, that is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to come in there, do your job, take care of your patients, and go home. Not really getting involved with all the politics involved on the unit and on the floor. Just do a great job and don't mess up pretty much, you know, and that's really your main focus, your only focus. Um, and not to make complaints about whatever assignment they may give you. Um, let's see, um, some other pros um, is a variety. You get to switch it up. Let's say you're like me, I do everything. I do, you know, I do psych, I do OBGYN, I do ICU, PCU, ER, med surge, IMC. The list goes on and on. Everything except for pretty much OR. 
Um, I even do, um, you know, care after the OR. So, you know, um, that post care. So that's, you know, if you like doing some of everything and you want to keep your skills sharp in every area, agency nursing and travel nursing is definitely going to be for you because a lot of times, even though you sign a contract that may say, I'm working only in the ICU or only in the ER or only in the IMC. And for your nursing students out there, IMC is an intermediate care unit. It's usually like a step down from the ICU, you know, the critical care unit. Um, it's still kind of critical care, but like not quite regular med show, just so your patient still can be, go either way. They can go back to ICU or they can downgrade. You never know, they're kind of at that cusp, like, can something happen? I don't know, let's keep a close watch. We only have four patients on this kind of unit. IMC is usually about roughly four patients. Every now and then you might get five, but usually IMC is a four patient unit to a nurse where ICU is more like one to two. Even unfortunately, you can get up to three on the ICU as well if you got someone that should be downgraded. But usually ICU is one to two patients. IMC is uh, about four patients. Um, so that patient is going to that unit. So either way, if you're someone like me who can do every unit, who has done every unit on their resume, okay, I actually love the fact that they float me. A lot of nurses don't like that. But if you're... um travel nurse, an agency nurse, and you want to be asked to continue your contract, you want uh, the hospital to love you, you you play the game, you know, pretty much you do what they're asking you to do. You know, you know, obviously within the scope of your practice, you have to feel safe, you have to know what you're doing. So if you know what you're doing, such as me, I'm a very seasoned nurse, I've been nursing for over 20 plus years. So I know I'm not maybe the typical nurse that I'm gonna be talking to on this show, but in general, the um, the nurse who is comfortable with certain units, let them float you. I mean, it keeps your skills super sharp, and at the same time, it lets them know that you are a team player, and you're willing to go where you have to go and do what you have to do to help that hospital. Because that's really what it's about. Your contract is really not about you making a whole lot of money. Ooh, I made all this money. That's nice, but it's really truly about fulfilling the need of the hospital without a lot of lip. And I say without a lot of lip, not to sound kind of nasty and rude or negative, but I say that because a lot of nurses, they'll go into this travel nursing and agency nursing um, arena, and it's like, oh, I don't do that. Oh, I'm not doing this. Oh, I'm not doing that. And oh my God, and that's not cool. The reason why you are there is because the hospital needs you. They're paying crazy dollars because they need you. The last thing they need is a lot of mouth and a lot of lip and a lot of back talk. They just need someone to just do the job with a smile, make the patient happy, go home, come back, do the same thing and do that every single time, every single day for your 13 weeks or six months or whatever contract you have. So that's the reality of it. You know, it's a win-win if you come and do your job, the hospital's happy with you and you're happy with them. You know, they're paying you what you want or close to what you want, hopefully, and um, you're giving them what they need which is a relief in um, having that, that shortage of staff member that can't do these jobs that they're hiring you to now do. Um, so, again, the pro is, you know, I, I mean, me personally, I think it's good when they float you. A lot of nurses don't agree with me on that, but I think it's a good thing because it shows you're a team player. And also, it actually helps you because it keeps your skills sharp, girl. It keeps your skills sharp. And I say girl, but, you know, we got men nurses and we got girl nurses, so... I mean girl, but I mean men and women um, in this field. Um, so that's a good thing. So again, one of the pros, you get to float around to different units, whether you may want to or not. If the hospital needs you to float, I my advice would be go ahead and float. Show them that you're a team player. Do your job. Do it well. Don't cause a lot of ripples in, uh, in the water. Just, you know, do what you're asked to do. Show them that you are the right person for the job and they pick the right nurse. Um, so again, you get that variety of different units, you get, um, higher pay, you get, uh, uh, a tax-free, a meal and housing stipend, you know, if you're doing the travel portion, again, travel could mean out of state, travel can also mean, um, locally, okay? So, um, if it's over, uh, you know, 50 miles and up, 
um, some other benefits. Um, let's say, for example, you are going into a contract. Let's say the contract starts next month, but you know in about a month and a half into your contract, you need two weeks off to do X, Y, Z, something maybe personal in your life, something you have to tend to, whatever. You can actually say in your contract, look, I need this time frame off while I'm doing my contract for whatever reason. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to tell you the, the reason, you just have to put the dates of what time frame you need off. When they actually, when they, when I say they, I mean your agency actually uh, sends that uh, proposal or that agreement through to the hospital and they say, look, okay, this is what the nurse is willing to do, but she's gonna need off from this time to this time, it's either one day or two days or one week or two weeks or whatever, she needs this time frame off, is that agreed on? Then the hospital will either agree or not agree. And if they agree, that's great. You now have your time that you need off. At the same time, you've actually started a contract that helps the hospital and you out all at the same time. And of course the agency, because they financially benefit from this agreement that you and the hospital you know, have come to terms about. So you have, um, again, to recap the benefits, you have more money, you also have a tax-free money option if you're doing travel or local travel and you're over 51, 50 miles. You also have the benefit of requesting certain times off and it'll you'll know if it's granted or not way before you start the contract because that has to be agreed upon before, you, before everyone signs on the dotted line. So it's a lot of benefits there. Now let me go right into the cons because this is important, especially for nursing students that are thinking about, oh my God, I'm going to you know, graduate and go right into nursing. And, and as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to go right into agency. I say, slow your roll, slow your roll on that. Okay. Get your feet wet, learn your, whatever unit you're on, give yourself at least a good two years to really get a good foundation. And I say this because one of the huge major cons with agency nursing and travel nursing, it is exactly the same is that you will get dumped on. And I know dumped on sounds like a really negative term, but let me explain what I mean. Let's say, for example, you have your staff nurses and you're staying in a critical care unit and their ratio is one to two. And you get two patients and then you have another patient that comes in and they give you a third. And you look around and you're like, wow, well, all the staff nurses have only one or one to two. Why am I getting three? The way the, age, way, the way the charge nurse looks at it, who the one who's making the assignment, they look at it, well, look, she's the agency nurse or the travel nurse. She's getting paid more money, so we should, you know, give her the extra patient because, hey, you know, she's getting more money. Let her do it. They don't look at the fact, the reality of the fact that you're giving up your benefits. You're giving up sick time, vacation time, all the stuff that they're getting automatically. They're not looking at that. They just look at you as, you're getting more money than us per hour, so therefore, we can dump on you. You know, it, we don't, we're not concerned about your license and your well-being and your safety and all that. We're just concerned that we need someone to take this patient, and we feel that you make more money, so you should do it. So, for someone like me, I don't have a big deal with that because I'm good at what I do. Okay, I can handle double the work, and I've done double the work and done an awesome job at it. But again, I have years and years, more than two decades of experience. So I can handle my stuff. I've been a nurse supervisor. I've been a charge nurse. I've been a, a you know preceptor. I've trained multiple nurses on all different kinds of units, from ER to ICU to PCU to IMC, you know, uh, you know, psych, psych, uh, uh, psych, OBGYN, all that stuff. I've done that. So to me, it's not really a challenge because I could do it in my sleep. But if I was a new graduate coming into this field, I'm like, oh my goodness, I would like to make extra money. I'm going to do agency nursing. You don't want to do that because you're risking your license. You don't know how you're going to be, unfortunately, for a lack of a better term, dumped on, given an assignment that, that's really overwhelming when you're already overwhelmed. If you're someone like me, I know how to multitask. I know how to, you know, set my what my priorities are for each patient, what can wait, what can't wait. So even if I have a slew of patients, I know how to manage that group so that everything is done the way it should be done. At the time it should be done, everyone's accounted for and everything is done on time, every doctor's happy, 
the charge house is happy, I'm happy, the hospital is happy. And everything is done the way it should be. Even if I got double the work than I maybe should have gotten. Got been there, done that, and I do it well. Not trying to brag, but hey, I, you know, it is what it is. I'm good at what I do. Um, so, but at the same time, where did that come from? It didn't come from because I just graduated. It came from years and years of experience. Um, so if you're a new nurse coming out and you got one of these agencies just trying to make money off of you, because a lot of them, that's all they're really trying to do to make a quick dime. So they're not looking at protecting you and your license. They're looking at cash. So, oh, hey, you're a new nurse. Would you like to make X amount of dollars? Oh, this is double what you normally get paid. Let's do it. And you say yes to this. You go to a hospital and the charge nurse says, oh, gee, I'm going to give her extra work because I don't want to do it. And I don't want my staff to do it. I'm going to give it to her. She gets paid more money. And again, it's not that me usually the hospital. It's usually the actual charge nurse that's in charge. Unfortunately, that particular night or day or evening or whatever shift you're working, it's not the hospital that's making the decision. It's the person that's running the show that particular time. That person may be seasoned, not seasoned, really bright, not too bright. Who knows? Either way, they're risking your license but putting more patients on you than you may not can handle. Okay? So, because they're assuming if you're in this position, you can handle it. You're an agency nurse. You're a traveler. They don't look at you as, oh, you're a new grad. You barely know, you know, you barely got your feet wet. So, I'm giving you an assignment that's really going to be extremely hard for you to do. So, again, for the new nurses, when I say new, I mean anyone under two years, tread lightly. You want to really tread lightly, especially if you look at an ICU, PCU, IMC, ER, any of that stuff. You want to tread lightly because you will get dumped on. You will get harder assignments and heavier assignments than everyone else. So they look at you as, hey, she makes more money. Hmm, let me pay her more money. Let me give her more work to do. That's just how they look at it. It's sad, to, you know, but that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, I got to tell you the truth. That's the way it is. I can't sugarcoat the truth. Okay, so knowing the truth, don't rush into it. Give yourself two years to get your feet wet and then go into this arena because agencies won't care if you go into the arena, you screw up, you've now lost your license, and you're not working anywhere except for Mickey D's. Hey, can I supersize your fries? I mean, really, nursing is over at that point. Okay, so, yeah, don't, don't do that to yourself because um, the agency will still go on. They'll find other nurses to make the money. And then you're, you're, you've lost your license and you've ruined your whole career all because you want to make a couple quick bucks with less than two years of experience. So not a good move. Okay, so again, the cons, you will get a heavier load. Expect that. Know it's coming because it depends on what charge nurse that you're going to get that day. And it changes on the unit because it's not one charge nurse on a unit. It's multiple charge nurses. And it um, depends on what they're feeling that day and how they're feeling and what's going on in the unit, if you're gonna get that extra patient that you may probably shouldn't have or not. And you know, you, you gotta do it with a smile because you're that extra help that got paid more money to help the unit. If you do it with a smile and you do a great job, they may actually ask you to stay and extend your contract Versus if you do it with an attitude and you do a bad job or, God forbid, you harm a patient, oh, my God. That's it for you. Your contract is ended and, you know, they're going to cut your contract quick. And, God forbid, it, you know, if your license is not on the line. Um, so tread into that lightly in terms of agency and contract. Um, I think that's mainly the main con um, is that. It's just not knowing what kind of assignment you're going to walk into. And from all the nurses I've met over the years, agency and just and travel agency, we've all had those assignments where we're like, really, the staff has one patient and I have three. That isn't even fair. That's like, what the hell? But it's done. It happens. It's just the way it is. And when you make a lot of waves and complain about it, you'll notice that you will not get um, renewed or your contract won't get extended. And when you don't make a lot of waves about it, unfortunately, you're kind of accepting it and you're dealing with it and they may continue doing what they're doing. But if you love that unit that much and you like that hospital that much, you kind of deal with it and you take it. And, um, you know, and be that team player that they really want you to be. Um, 
In addition to that, you get the what you really want. You may want to extend your contract. You may want to stay there longer. Maybe you're used to the doctors there, you're used to the staff there, you're used to the, the other nurses there, and you're like, you know, I'm used to it. I want to stay, you know, and um, yeah. So um, in a nutshell, I think that's really it. I really can't go into any more detail than that. Um, and I stress more than anything, my biggest concern is not the nurses that are seasoned who know their stuff. My huge and biggest concern are those fresh nurses who just graduated, who are looking at, oh, the money, oh my God. You know, I could get 30 something an hour, but if I do contract, I can get like 70 an hour. Ooh, yeah, you can get 70 an hour, but if you don't know what you're doing and you're not safe, you're gonna be putting the patient in jeopardy. You're putting your license in jeopardy. You're putting your agency in jeopardy. And for what? If things don't work out the way it should, you really have just literally risked your license and your whole entire livelihood over one job. And now you went to school for nothing. And you're looking at McDonald's or Burger King for a job. Just saying. So it's kind of harsh to put it quite like that. But do you want the reality or do you want me to sugarcoat it? So I'm trying to give you the real deal. So for all you people that are tempted by the money, don't be tempted. Give yourself a full two years before you even allow yourself to accept any kind of contracts from these agencies that will be calling you. Because once you become a nurse, you're in that database and they will call you, they will email you to death until you say, yes, oh well, sure, I'll do it. But look at what you're saying yes to. Are you ready to be on the same kind of unit you're already doing, whether it's med surge or ER or whatever, and to get again, for lack of a better term, dumped on or get given extra work, let's say double the work that you really should should not be getting, do you feel safe handling? I personally feel safe handling it because I've been there, done that, it's no big deal. You know, it's no big deal for me. But for some, if I was a new nurse, that would be a huge deal because you're not even used to, you know, pacing yourself and organizing yourself and prioritizing really well let alone getting dumped on by a whole nother group of people that you can barely manage. You don't want that. Protect yourself, protect your license, protect your reputation, protect the agency that you're working through, and most importantly, numero uno, protect your patient. You know? So that's really all I have to say about the pros and cons. Um... Just number one pro, a lot of money with travel and, and, and agency. And the number one con is you will be expected to do above and beyond what the typical nurse has to do on a unit. Because they look at you as you're getting more money. They forget why. They forget all the stuff you've given up to get that extra dollar or two in your check. They don't care about that. They care about that they're giving you the extra work and not their staff. And they want you to do it with a smile, without any attitude and without any talking back type of thing. Okay, so I hope that answers a lot of questions that I've had on my emails and my text messages. And, um, yeah. So if there's any other questions or comments, please feel free to put in the comment section Something else you want me to um, explain in better detail, feel free to make comments and I will do that for you. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, to your nurses out there that were curious about agency and travel and to your nursing students out there that had no idea. Now you know. All right. So I'll see you later and talk to you soon. Have a great day, guys. Take care and stay positive. Attitude of gratitude. Bye-bye.